Have you been noticing this trend where people who are signed to YouTube live streaming contracts, the day their contract end, switch right back to Twitch or start multi-streaming? Because I have, and it's got me wondering, is YouTube live streaming a wash? Has it been a failure of an attempt by YouTube to compete against Twitch? And I'm not the only one thinking this. This is also a thought shared by Dan Clancy. The YouTube and, and YouTube Live not changing isn't because they move slow. It's because YouTube Live isn't a priority for YouTube. And that's certainly a fact, all right? YouTube Live streaming can only grow as long as it doesn't impede on the already incredibly successful YouTube video service. If you grow YouTube Live Stream and that takes away some percentage of success, right? Like if you basically recommend more YouTube Live Streams and that keeps people on YouTube for less time because they're watching less videos because they don't enjoy the live streams as much as the videos, you have made a failed product, even if it ends up beating Twitch because YouTube videos make so, so, so much money and they are so, so, so popular. That sucks. He goes on to talk about the streamers themselves and says, went to YouTube, man. But your yeah, friends I, that went to YouTube are all coming back, Sushi. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you can see someone already adds me in this, but he's not wrong, right? Look, you know, when Myth ended his YouTube contract, I believe he's, he took a break. He stopped streaming on YouTube. Lily, the moment her contract ended, switched back over to Twitch. Uh, Dr. Lupo, when his contract ended, started multi-streaming. Uh, I mean, shit, Tim the Tapman today said he was going to start multi-streaming on Twitch and YouTube. And look, his viewership is better on Twitch after three years, I think, on YouTube uh, than it is right now on YouTube. That, that, that's crazy. Three years and nothing fucking changed. He's literally doing better on Twitch. And you might be wondering, okay, why are streamers switching back to Twitch? Well, one might be because they do better. They get more viewers. Uh, two, it's because they also make more money. I saw someone say, sub count, by the way, uh, earlier. I didn't answer it. I apologize. I'm not making up messages here. Uh, we are at 6.3. Right, crowd, our game's over. If you have an official there. number, Enjoying we're up. probably closer to 6.5, if I had to guess. And Tim basically says he got 6,500 subs in one single stream on Twitch and on YouTube, he had 14,000 subs. So he basically got almost half his subscriber count in one day. So he's going to start making more money from Twitch subs than he ever did from YouTube members. And I basically tweeted out this exact point that it feels like, you know, YouTube live streamers switch back to Twitch and it got everyone asking, am I personally switching back to Twitch? Is that what this is? And the answer is no, not at all. That's not what my tweet was. I was actually just noticing a fact. Uh, I personally have a YouTube contract that is not over yet, and I'm happy streaming on YouTube. Uh, but I do have a contract that allows me to stream on Twitch. And I enjoy multi-streaming in the only circumstance where I find it good, which is for my events, a aka like for Ludwig Streamer Games. If I just stream that on one platform, it would do a lot worse in terms of viewership than if I streamed it on multiple platforms and also let other people stream it. I mean, we peaked at 175K and averaged 134,000 viewers. That wouldn't happen if it only was on YouTube or only on Twitch. And for events, I want as many people to see the event as possible. That's all I care about. By the way, I'm a live, or excuse me, multi-streaming hater. I actually think it is a generally bad thing for creators. Uh, at least creators who are trying to be like, you know, the biggest creator in the world. I think it can be pretty good for creators who just want maybe as many eyeballs on them as possible. If they're trying to spread a message or raise money for charity or doing events. Uh, I don't think it makes sense if you want to be the next Kai Sinat. You don't become the next Kai Sinat uh, if you have 50,000 viewers on YouTube and 50,000 viewers on Twitch. You become the next Kai Sinat if you have like, you know, 90,000 on just one platform and you're the biggest person on that platform because the rich get richer on that platform, right? You'll, you'll grow and grow and grow and grow and your peak viewership will be insane. It'll be a, a moment a lot of people talk about. It'll all be drawn to you. I think when you fracture your audience, you also fracture your peak growth, uh, which, which I think is a bad thing. This is my take on it. This could be wrong. I, by the way, if, you, if you're new to streaming, I also don't think it's a bad thing. If you're new to streaming, you should try out both platforms. Don't, don't marry yourself to a platform. You don't know where your audience is going to come from. But I find multi-streamers to also be bad at multi-streaming. They, they usually care about one chat more than the other. Anyway, I digress. Multi-streaming hater. I'm not going to start multi-streaming when, when my contract's done. I, I don't know what I'm going to do exactly yet. Uh, but this goes back to our initial question. Does this mean YouTube live streaming has been a failure? Is it, is it bad? Is it a flop? Should they quit? Did they fell off? The answer, no. No, vehemently no. If you look at the most watched major streaming platforms, by hours watched of live broadcasts, quarter two of this year, 
YouTube gaps Twitch. It's not close. Three times bigger. 15 uh, a billion hours watched on YouTube versus 5 billion hours watched on Twitch. However, that doesn't exactly tell the full story. Because if you look at this, you also have to include, you know, some people like YouTube's biggest live streamer by hours watched, which is not iShow Speed. It is Lo-Fi Girl. Lo-Fi Girl is like the biggest streamer in the world on YouTube live because she streams every fucking day with 15 to 25,000 average viewers. I guess maybe technically she's a VTuber, but it's also weird if you are including, you know, uh, things like Lo-Fi Girl or videos playing on loop or what there's a bunch of on YouTube live, which is scams. In fact, one of the biggest live streams right now on YouTube is Tesla, except it's not Tesla. It is a scam account with 20,000 subscribers with 86,000 bots watching to give it some credibility. So people click on it who aren't part of the bot number and then they scan this code and then they lose all of their crypto. Do not scan this code. I've been showing this as an example of YouTube's corrupt uh, 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 botting problem, uh, not for you to get scams. Uh, so, okay. What if we just track actual YouTube gaming streamers, right? Like actual streamers, actual people who are streaming video games. Well, then the contest becomes a lot more fair. And there's still a lot of huge streamers. I mean, look, Steak right now is live with 41,000 viewers. That is massive. That is a huge stream. He's absolutely killing it, right? I don't have to tell you guys about iShow Speed. Arguably one of the, if not the biggest streamer in the world. Maybe, maybe second to Kai. I don't know. Top two for sure. Uh, and if you look at that... Well, that's what Stream Hatchet does. It becomes a lot more fair, all right? You can see that Twitch is still the big dog with 5 billion uh, hours watched. This is still quarter two of 2024. And YouTube is at 2 billion. However, that is still an increase for YouTube over Twitch. They're gaining market share over Twitch. And again, this is just YouTube gaming. This is not any of like the political stuff or the 24-7 channels or the videos that are playing on loop and acting as live streams. This is just gaming streamers and it is growing fast, all right? This is this is a bit of trouble. Twitch is on the down in a year where live streaming is back, baby. It peaked in COVID, all right? We had 9.8 billion uh, hours watched quarter two of COVID. This is 2021. Uh, it went down, and now we are coming back. In the next couple years, live streaming will likely be bigger than it was during COVID, and YouTube is part of the reason why it is growing, along uh, a bunch of other sites. Not so much Twitch. Twitch is not really growing which maybe isn't what you think of because culturally everyone leaves YouTube or all these other sites like Kick to go to Twitch. So where are these viewers coming from? Not America. So if I were to rephrase the question, is YouTube live streaming a failure? In America? In English-speaking countries? Kind of. Yeah, maybe a little bit. They're not doing as well as people thought they would. Across the world? Fuck no, they're doing amazing. They are crushing. And you know this is true if you watch VTubers, VTubers crush on YouTube, man. Hollow Live, they fucking run that shit, bro. They run YouTube live streaming. That is a big section of it. In fact, all of Asia seems to prefer YouTube for a live streaming platform. And it makes sense. All right. One of the countries that did accept Twitch and did become huge uh, 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 in terms of like including Twitch, uh, Twitch into their culture was South Korea. And then Twitch abandoned South Korea. So, you know. Not a lot of money being put into Asia for Twitch or by Twitch, but YouTube, they, they crush it, right? So Vietnam is one of the biggest countries for YouTube live streaming. Indonesia is one of the biggest countries. Uh, uh, Japan, of course, with all the VTubers. And now South Korea is becoming incredibly popular uh, because Twitch has abandoned them there. Uh, and when you think of the biggest live streamers in the world, if you're so America-centric, you might think it's one of these four, right? Maybe LCS right now, maybe, maybe uh, you know, Asmin or, or XQC. Uh, but right now, I think the biggest streamer in terms of average viewers right now is uh, uh, Mixie Gaming, who is a Vietnamese streamer who streams on Nemo TV. He has 130,000 viewers. He has more than the three streamers I just mentioned combined. So when you leave the American or English speaking sphere, you understand where YouTube live streaming is thriving. And I know that wasn't a YouTube live streaming example, but I think it, it shows my point that not everything is actually happening on Twitch. And YouTube live streaming isn't as bad as people make it out to be, all right? I know it is vastly preferred by lurkers. People who never type in chat, which is most people who watch live streams, love YouTube live. 
because the player is way better. And because they don't interact with chat, they don't care that the chat experience is worse. They're able to pick up where they left off in the VOD, rewind easily to catch up to a moment, and it works just like YouTube, which everybody watches. Chatters vastly prefer Twitch because the Twitch chatting experience is way better, right? There's a culture there. And because chatting is better, streamers also tend to prefer Twitch. Again, this is just in English-speaking countries. Streamers tend to prefer Twitch because they like when chat is happy because that makes their lives better because all they do is read chat. Another big buff YouTube live streaming has, though, is peak viewership. Big moments, big cultural moments, things that you had to be there for, things that you want to fucking talk about the next day, oftentimes happen on YouTube, all right? Because there's an algorithm there. Once you start to gain viewership, it gets recommended to a shit ton of people. And if you look at the channels with the highest peak viewers, it is not eBuy at number one. It is one plus India during the Indian elections last year, peaking at almost 10 million viewers. Kaze TV peaked at 6 million a couple of years ago on YouTube, right? Apple, when they announced their new products, 3.6 million. Law and Crime, I think this might have been the Johnny Depp trial with 3.5 million. Sidemen with a charity match, 2.6 million. In fact, most peak viewership all time in live streaming space comes from YouTube, not from Twitch, man. All right, because Twitch isn't good at getting a huge amount of people to watch one live stream at one moment. They are good at getting people a high average viewership for a long period of time, which honestly isn't a bad thing. It works for most people who do more chill streams. But if you are a streamer who does like big events, two hour streams that a lot of hype shit happens, people like I show speed who go to a country and you're going to watch because some crazy shit's about to go down. YouTube is a perfect place to be. In fact, just last week, Aqua, Minato Aqua, who is a, uh, uh, a VTuber, uh, had an insane amount of viewership. You might think the biggest live streaming of the past week was Kai and Speed doing their Minecraft run. I think they peaked at like uh, 700,000 viewers combined. Uh, Aqua, with her graduation stream from Hololive, peaked at 735,000. All right, and that happened on YouTube. I do not think that would have happened on Twitch. I do not think she would have had as many viewers peak if that had happened. Uh, this does not mean that YouTube live streaming is better than Twitch by any means, but there are pros for it, okay? There are pros for it. There are also cons. <laughs> there are some big cons, actually. Uh, one of them being the fact that you cannot stream longer than 12 hours. It is pretty apparent that we are in a marathon meta, all right? People stream for very long periods of time because you build a, a bunch of viewers in a category. More people end up watching you. You get more peak viewers overall. Uh, and it's something that I've been doing for a long time, but it doesn't work as well on YouTube. And when Kai has started doing it, it fucking crushes. And the Minecraft thing I just started talking about, he peaked at 381,000 viewers, all right? But he was doing it with speed. Speed peaked at 351,000 which is not too far behind. But you might notice throughout the stream, his marathon stream, there's just severe drop-offs in viewership. And the reason for that is because YouTube does not let you stream longer than 12 hours. So all these VODs are cut off at 11 hours, whatever. Uh, basically, after 12 hours, if you continue to stream, the stream is no longer available to watch. You can never watch the VOD back. In fact, you can't even download the VOD back. I learned this firsthand when I tried to stream Elden Ring in one sitting and my uh, local recording failed and I asked YouTube for the VOD and they said, you can't get it. They eventually got it to me after like a lot of fucking tech behind the scenes in like 720p or something. Thank you to the to the YouTube tech people for that. But, but that shit sucks, man. That shit sucks. All right, I streamed 58 hours and the viewership falls off a cliff. I will never get another viewer, not one more, for that entire live stream that I did. Even though you can upload 24 hours of a fireplace. Why can't I stream 13 hours, but a fireplace can stream for 24? I don't get it. You can also have a 100 hour timer video. Why? Why can't I stream? Let me stream longer. Maybe just verified creators are allowed to stream up to 50 hours. Something like that. All right. Do you know how big Speed's stream would have been if it didn't have to be broken into 10 parts? The final video would have like fucking 40, 50, 60 million views. That shit would be crazy. But YouTube doesn't let you do that. And I think YouTube is still technically too far behind Twitch for it to compete with English-speaking audiences. And it is making a lot of streamers in the English-speaking space switch over back to Twitch. Uh, and elsewhere in the world, they're crushing because Twitch is not competing in those areas. They're, they're, they're struggling in those areas or just leaving them entirely. 
but as far as English speaking world, yes, YouTube live streaming a bit of a flop. What will I do when it's time for my contract to end? Well, stick around in this channel and you'll find out. All right, thank you all for watching. See you later. Goodbye now, everybody. Goodbye. Hopefully that answers the question. All right, see you later. Goodbye now. Goodbye. Subscribe. Goodbye.